guys, this is Steffi, AKA In My Humble Opinion, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are wearing dark colors because Diana has died now. And we are at the end of part one of season six, the final season of The Crown. So in today's video, we are watching season six, episode four. The episode is entitled Aftermath. It would have been better for me to watch the movie that Peter Morgan wrote about this specific time period. Wait, let me see. It was called, it was with Helen Mirren. Uh, is it The Queen? The Queen. So he wrote the screenplay for a film called The Queen. I believe Helen Mirren won the Oscar for her portrayal as Queen Elizabeth. And it was about this specific period um, in the royal family's history, like the aftermath of Diana dying and the queen. Didn't she like take a while to respond? Something like that. It would have been beneficial for me to watch that movie and then to see how the depiction of this time period is going to compare to the way Peter Morgan covers it in The Crown. I know there's gonna be a question in the comment section being like, you should do a reaction to it. I'm not doing a reaction to it. This is it. The Crown season six is it and then we're done. But um, yeah, it would have been beneficial for me to watch that. But in any case, we're gonna watch this episode right now. And then um, maybe in my own personal private time, I will see how the movie compares, but let's just get into it. Balmoral Castle. This is gonna be so sad to see the kids react to this. Hello. Uh, yeah, Moo Moo. I wanna see how he reacts to this too. It's Diana, Princess of Wales. I'm afraid there's been an accident. She was in a car crash with Dirty Fired. We believe the accident was serious and Mr. Fired died instantly. Just had a call. Oh, wow. Person. He died instantly. <laughs> Also, like, he re so did this really happen? Like, he went to the scene of the crime before even going to the, the morgue. Damn, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so sad. Uh. Oh my gosh, no. Oh. Oh, so sad. Oh my gosh, it's just like, oh gosh, it's just so senseless and it, this did not need to happen. <laughs> Sometimes it's like just even watching people receive bad news, it's just... I don't know if you guys have seen on YouTube, I forget what the name of their channel is, but someone had filmed, it was like these four gay guys and they were watching the news together and they watched the news change from like, she has been sent to hospital to she has passed away. Try finding it on YouTube, it's very interesting. Oh my gosh. I want to see like Diana's family react to this. Like, where are they? <laughs> Ooh, do you think like the royal family also kind of feels guilty too? Why did she change her plans? Why what was she doing in Paris? What caused the accident? Did the driver survive or did he die too? When are you going to tell the boys? <sighs> I wanted to let them sleep. How awful. They like go to bed excited to see their mom the next day and then they wake up to find out that their mom has passed away. Like, that's awful. Oh, this is gonna be enormous. People have no idea. This is gonna be the biggest thing that any of us has ever seen. Well, I didn't realize like Charles was like, I mean, I'm sure he was really, really emotionally affected, but to see him really cry and wail. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so sad. I. Oh my god, this is so sad. Oh no! Morning, darling. Oh my god, how awful. Oh gosh. I'm afraid you're going to have to be very brave. Oh god. This is trauma. Like the. Princes are now awake. This is so sad. That's so sad. Oh. Diana was no longer royal, no longer HRH. 
Well, it must be seen to be doing this by the book. Indeed, sir, and I suggested as such myself to the Prince of Wales, to which he asked if we would prefer the mother of the future King of England to be brought back in a Harrods van. Oh, wow. This is drama. <laughs> I have also taken the liberty of drafting a short statement expressing your and the Prince of Wales' shock and distress at the news. Thank you. It's such a wild thought throughout their entire lives. Whenever something like catastrophic or big happens to them, they always have to be so keenly aware of how every single one of the rooms is going to be perceived by the public. <laughs> they can't even like properly grieve because they have to be overly, they have to be just so aware of the perception that the public has. <laughs> He didn't even know that they weren't actually engaged. <laughs> a great. Now he's going to use this as a way to get in. I mean, like, you can't blame him because in this moment, he really does think Dodie and Diana were engaged. But at the same time, the skeptic in me is like, are you using their deaths as a way to get into the inner circle and to social climb? <laughs> I can't believe like these boys have to carry on about their day like normal. It's just, oh. Where is Diana's family? Like, where are her siblings? Where are her parents? I mean, I know this show is centered on the royal family, but... <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Did the paparazzi at that time, like, feel bad at all? Like, blood on their hands. One of the busiest cities in the world, and you brought it to a standstill. Ta-da! Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! It's metaphysical Diana! It was ever thus. You were always the most beloved of all of us. They're gonna have their closure closure conversation right now. Thank you for how you were in the hospital. I'll take that with me. So it seems like Diana still really loved Charles. You know, I loved you so Even much. Oh! <laughs> I'm reading her mind! To the very end, I guess. She always loved him. Be here forever with me, Cole. No, it won't. Well, admit it, you've had that thought already. Yeah. <laughs> I love how her ghost is, like, <laughs> cheeky. <laughs> Regret. That will pass. No, it won't. Flea bag. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I wonder if metaphysical Diana will keep popping up in this episode. Like, will we see her with the boys again, or...? The aunties. Where's Granny? On a call. Spencer's. Okay. I was gonna say, I was like, at least we get a mention. The Prime Minister feels that the right thing is a public funeral, a state occasion in all but name, and I agree with him. But that would mean leaving Scotland and participating in some huge spectacle in London. Well, this is such a complicated situation. I've just been out there. I've seen it for myself. People yeah. taking to the streets. The to public needs the to mourn her. And they will expect us to show grief and compassion and for you to be mother to the nation. Oh. Raised his finger at his mother. And I'd rather not be lectured on how or when to grieve or show emotion. Particularly by the person who caused her the most pain. God, even at his lowest, they're like, And Charles, it's still on you, buddy. Yes, he's a shy boy, but he's also a future king. And when his mother dies and people grieve, he has to behave like one. Always have to be aware of the way people are perceiving them at all times. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Muhammad al Fayd and his entire family. I'm glad they're showing also the way Dodi's family and that culture was grieving his death too. Because there was loss on both sides. 
I need a monologue from him. Maybe he can talk to metaphysical Dodie. <laughs> His son, like, literally died trying to please his father up to the very end. He didn't even have the courage to actually tell him how he really felt. So much so that at this point, Mumu thinks that Dodie and Diana were engaged to be married. He never really knew his son or how he felt. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very lonely man that just wants approval too. Oh my god, see? I was like, if we get metaphysical Diana, we're gonna get metaphysical Jody. <laughs> Oh, here's their closure conversation. Well, felt sorry. Asked for forgiveness. You know, I get why they were able to make an entire movie off of this singular incident because there's so many interesting and complicated dynamics at play. The way everyone is trying to process their grief and also the aspect of the way they need to not necessarily like perform their grief, but show to the public that they are grieving and balancing that with being the royal family. Makes for a very compelling story. Wow, had no idea that William ran away for a bit. Damn, I like feel really bad for Charles. Like my gosh, stressful. 14 hours that poor boy was gone. That's a really long time. And if he is behaving so out of character, perhaps Charles is right. But what? That the rest of the country is starting to behave out of character too. He's been urging me to help calm things down. By doing what? Oh, Philip, please. Bereavement helplines are overwhelmed. Sensible adults are weeping openly in the streets. Don't you dare. Sanity will soon prevail. Hold firm. This definitely feels like a repeat of, I forget what the episode was called, it was like Aberdeen or something like that? It was like season three, season three, just like the delayed response. Where's the country? Like a sick, uncomforted child, and then there's the queen hiding away, cold and aloof, unable to mother the nation in precisely the same way as she was unable to mother us. <sighs> Parental trauma. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd had a chance to reconsider your position. It'd be very easy to dismiss the whole thing as mass hysteria, but the more I look at it... Charles having to parent his mother in this moment of extreme grief for him. Diana gave people what they needed, even if it was just confirmation that great pain and sadness doesn't discriminate. It comes to those with beauty and privilege too, and they adored her for it. Hmm. Points were made. Points were made. Charles, I'm very impressed. Handling this very maturely. And even though he is experiencing extreme grief too, he's able to carry on with some sets. <gasps> oh my gosh. She's talking to everybody. I'm trying to show you who they are, what they feel, what they need. And I know that must be terrifying, but it needn't be. As long as anyone can remember, you've taught us what it means to be British. Maybe it's time to show you're ready to learn too. Wow, she's just going around telling everybody what they need to hear. <laughs> but Elizabeth, just like as a person too, she's not like the showy one of the family. So I like understand her reticence of this idea of like, quote unquote, performing her grief. We're going to London tomorrow. What? You heard me. She was like, I'm the queen, bitch. We're gonna do what I say, so. 
and concern for those who remain. Oh my god. Oh, so sad. So sad. This week at Balmoral, we have all been trying to help William and Harry come to terms with the devastating loss that they and the rest oh of my us gosh. have suffered. Oh, this is so sad. Oh. Our thoughts are also with Diana's family and the families of those who died with her as they seek to heal their sorrow and then to face well, the Well, there you go, Mumu. That's what you wanted. So, approval to be aligned with the royal family and now you're like tied to tragedy forever. The fact that William and Harry had to do this too. Just so sad. May those who died rest in peace, and may we, each and every one of us, thank God for someone who made many, many people happy. Pretty good speech, good words, nice sentiment, showed enough emotion, but also steady. Oh my god, is she gonna be there again? Hmm. All right, and some post-show thoughts. Oh, wow. There was just so many like dynamics at play in terms of trying to figure out how can the royal family like privately grieve, but also the need to publicly grieve as well because the entire world, but especially the UK was in such deep morning it's just oh it's such a tragedy what happened did not know that william disappeared for 14 hours that's really intense but it makes sense in a way i kind of felt like william and the queen kind of had similar reactions because similarly to william who ran away and isolated himself the queen was kind of doing that too by staying in Balmoral and not showing her face to the public. That image of Diana and Dodie, I don't think like his remains were there. Like I think maybe it was like an empty casket or something, but when the curtains opened and it showed Diana's portrait next to Dodie's portrait and Mumu in the center, like the irony of him always wanting that Western approval and really wanting to align himself with the upper echelon, especially to be associated with the royal family. But it wasn't the union that he thought it would be. It wasn't like the marriage between Diana and Dodie. They're gonna always be tied together because of this tragedy. And, you know, I did not think that the crown was ever going to do some sort of like metaphysical thing but the fact that metaphysical diana and dodie like popped up several times throughout the episode to kind of have these like conversations of closure with their loved ones i found moving i think you know you can easily kind of be snarky about that and be like oh that's so cheesy but you know it's a show so we came here to watch tv i can't think of another time in this in this entire series when they ever did anything quite like that. Like have people who passed away reappear. I think I remember reading somewhere that Claire Foy and Olivia Coleman shot additional scenes for part two of season six. I don't know, that might've been just rumors, but I think I remember reading that somewhere. So I do wonder if we're going to get a scene where all of the Queen Elizabeths are together literally ha having a conversation with one another like i really 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 wonder if that is going to happen because if they are introducing like metaphysical aspects of the show now in part one i won't be surprised if they pop up in part two just say i jokingly tweeted like a couple weeks ago or maybe a couple months ago now that i want olivia coleman and claire foy and imelda staunton to sit as queen elizabeth's like i need all of the queen elizabeth's to reunite a la the hollywood reporter if they all are kind of just like sitting around a, a circular table conversing about their experiences as the queen not like the actors themselves like literally in character young elizabeth middle age elizabeth and older elizabeth just being like so let's have a debrief of this entire experience. That'd be really funny. Watching this episode really just makes me wanna watch the movie to see like what they were able to explore more deeply within like a movie 
I don't know how long that movie is, like a two hour time span, I'm assuming, versus like a 50-ish minute episode for TV. Again, to reiterate, I am not going to do a reaction to that movie. I'm gonna watch that movie on my own time. But yeah, in all, I think this was like a solid episode, a nice way to wrap up Diana and Dodie's storylines. I think it's good that they like have six more episodes after this and they chose to like really stop part one here, give it a couple weeks and then part two. Cause I feel like the tone of the back six episodes in season six is gonna definitely be a bit of a departure from the first four episodes. So we shall see how that goes. All right, well, my question for you guys is, I wanna know like if you were alive during Diana's death, I wanna know what your memories of that time was like. I think when she passed away, I was mm, four years old. So I don't really have any memory of it. But my parents did tell me that we were at a family friend's house and I was playing with my cousins. And then one of them, they were like, I don't know, like five or six years old. One of them like ran in to the house to tell all of the adults in the house that Diana had passed away. So that's really my memory of it. I don't, I was so young when she passed away. So if you were, um, you know, if you have any memories of what that experience and time was like, definitely leave it in the comment section below because I just think it'd be like interesting to share our experiences. And also, like I said, during the reaction portion, I don't know what the name of the YouTube video is. If I can find it, I'll put a link to it in the pinned comment for this video. But there is a video that was posted by this guy. It was like him and his three friends and they were watching the news and they were watching the news when it was still like Diana was in hospital. And then they have like their genuine reaction to when it switched to Diana has passed away. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. If I can find it, I'll post it in the pinned comment so you can watch it too. All right, so before this video ends, I wanted to post my reaction to the teaser for part two. So I'm going to play that now. Here we go. This is the teaser for part two. It's only like 52 seconds. I want you to have as normal a life as possible, for as long as possible. It becomes a teen heartthrob. I feel that easy being number one. Is it? Oh, you'd know. University should be about having fun and growing up. You can't have fun when you've got photographers with you wherever you go. The one and only Prince Charming. I, I love him. And, and he said <laughs> hi and then he shook my hand. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> That's so sad, like he doesn't have his mom to help guide him like through this too. Wow, okay, okay. All right, and my thoughts about the teaser. Yeah, definitely tonally, it seems like it's gonna be a bit of a departure from part one. Because part one was so Diana and Dodie focused, which understandably so, and part two definitely seems to be more like William. And I don't know, that look between um, Elizabeth and um, Margaret, is Margaret gonna die? Oh no. And then um, also the actual marriage of between Camilla and Charles, I'm gonna guess is gonna be in that back half too. I'm assuming no Harry and Meghan. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Hearthrob Teen William, here we go. <laughs> All right, well, that's about it for me with this video. Um, if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please turn on the notification bell so you know when a new video from me comes out and comment down below your thoughts on this episode and also part one of season six of The Crown. I'm gonna take this moment to plug my podcast that I co-host with my friend Angie. It's a podcast called Diva Dailies where we deconstruct divas on film, TV, and in music. We've talked about a bunch of different divas. We've done a bunch of episodes. We've passed a hundred. So if you guys are interested in listening to that and you're looking for new podcasts to listen to, check out Diva Dailies. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Obviously going to be back to finish and wrap up part two of The Crown season six when that comes out. Give me a couple of days as soon as, you know, the episodes are released. Uh, so I can, you know, watch it and then edit these videos and they should be up within a couple of days when that back half drops. 
But then after that, you guys, the Crown season six is a wrap on reactions on this channel. So, you know, if you've enjoyed watching reaction videos from me over the past couple of years, I really, really do appreciate your support. And I thank you for watching this channel and these videos, but I definitely feel like I've been wanting to make other kinds of content for quite some time and I'm finally gonna be able to do that. So yeah, if that's something you're interested in, watching stay tuned for what's to come but if not you're only here for reaction videos that's cool too just thanks for you know supporting me whenever you did but yeah that's pretty much it as always everything i said was just my own personal thoughts and all my humble opinion see you for part two when that comes out of the crown season six and uh yeah see you then bye